Hi guys, it's Mrs. Millison. Okay, in this video we're going to look at some methods that we use with array lists. And if you guys don't mind, I'm just going to call them lists from now on. Okay. Um, we already looked at the add method and the size method, so we'll revisit those in the other video. And then we, um, yeah, and we'll add some more. Okay. Okay, so first thing I'm going to build is an array list of strings. I'm going to call it my grocery list. And let's add a couple items to my grocery list. I'll use my add method. I'm going to add a couple items. I'm going to put a few in here because I want to do some change. And then we'll just get eggs in here as the last one. Okay, so let's print out a little message here. We'll say how big my list is um, and actually print the list. Okay, so remember there are, remember the size method. Oops. This will tell me the size of my list, which will be four. So there are four items on my grocery list. And then remember there is a built-in print method or all I have to do is put the um, list name in there and it'll print all my items. Okay. Oh, good. No errors. Okay. So there are four items on my grocery list, banana, apple, cheese, and eggs. Okay. All right. Now I just want to talk about this. A couple things. Um, obviously the size method yields an int. Okay. We have an int. But I want you to see what happens when I add something, okay? Now, if I, um, system.out, if I do grocery.add uh, milk, let's do milk, okay? It's going to add milk to my list, but this is also, since I have an iPrint statement, you're going to see wh what it, what it yields. Okay, it actually returns something. That add method returns something. It returns a Boolean true. Okay, um, I think that's just returns. It always returns true because I think it's confirming that it got added to the list. And that might go back to some old um, code a gazillion years ago where they had to confirm when something, if, confirm if something was added to a list or not. Okay. So just keep that in mind. You can, uh, when you do the add method, the dot add method, it does return a Boolean. We don't need it. I mean, up here, we, it's not like we used it, but just be aware. Okay. Now there is another um, type of add. Okay. There's a second method for add. And this time, not only do I have to specify what I want to add, I can specify the index number that I want to add it into. Now remember, we added milk, so it gives banana, apple, cheese, eggs, and then milk. So what we're going to do is we're going to put um, yogurt in index 2. Okay, so if I specify an index number and then the item, okay, then the object that I'm going to put in, and this happens to be a string, it'll take... Um, 0, 1, 2, it'll take cheese and eggs and everything after it, move it over and stick yogurt in, okay? Now, this doesn't yield anything, okay? So if I printed this, this is a void method, okay? So nothing actually yields, no, nothing returns from this in our list so we can see it. Okay, so what you can see down here is we started with the banana, apples, cheese, and eggs, and we added the milk at the end, and then I came back and added yogurt in index 2. And remember, it always starts with index 0, 0, 1, 2. So it put the yogurt here and pushed the che cheese, eggs, and milk to the right, okay? So I have two methods to add. I can just use the add to tack it onto the end of the list, or I can do um, add where I specify the index number, and then it puts it in that index number and moves everything else to the right. Okay? So that's kind of nice. 
All right, we have another um, method called set. Okay, and what set does, it actually changes one of the items. Okay, so I have to tell it what index. So let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 will change index 4, which is eggs, to bread. Okay. Now, I want you to see, first I want you to see what happens. Let's see how this works. So now, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, eggs will now be bread. And eggs are gone. Okay, so set replaces a value um, in a specific index with whatever value you're putting in. Okay, but I also want you to see something here. If I print this, I want, to see, I want you to see what it what it returns. Okay. So what this returns, this set method, what it returns, it returns what it replaced. Okay. Um, so it replaced the eggs with bread. So it returns what it replaces. So that's kind of nice because you can keep track of things that you've changed. What was replaced? Okay, so if you want to keep track of changes in a document or um, changes in a list, you know, the set method, you can, you can um, take that returned value and stick it into another list, okay, so that you can keep track of things that have been removed, okay, or been replaced, okay. And again, this returned a string because that's the type of object it was. If this was an integer array list, what it would have returned was the integer that was replaced. Okay, so it doesn't matter what type of object it was, whatever is replaced, it will return. Okay. Okay, I got two more. Remove. Now, remove is pretty self explanatory. Um, let's remove. Uh, what should we remove? Uh, I don't know. Let's remove yogurt. Zero, one, two. Ah, uh, let's remove um, cheese. Zero, one, two, three. So I'm just going to say um, remove three. Okay. So what this will do, oops, it'll just remove um, the item in three. Okay. In index three. So if we print our list, of course, I forgot what three was already. What was three? Cheese? I shouldn't see the cheese anymore. And indeed, cheese is gone. Okay, so it removes the item and then it, you know, continues the list from there. Okay. Um, now, does this yield anything? Let's see if this returns anything. Okay, see this works just like set. This will return whatever was removed. So again, you can keep track of things that you've returned uh, that you've removed. Okay, that's kind of nice. Not only are these methods updating your list, but you can keep track of stuff. Okay, you keep track of things that you've replaced, things that you've removed, and all that stuff. Okay, the last one is um, the get method. Okay, so let's see. Um, if I do grocery.get, and again, this is just like a getter, okay? It's, it's going to get um, the item from the grocery at a specific index. Uh, let's get zero. Let's get bananas, okay? So, of course, if I run this, nothing's going to happen. Oh, I know what I want to do. Let's print the list. Now let's see if anything happens to, to banana. Is it replaced? Is it removed? Okay, banana is still there. Okay, so get doesn't um, remove the banana or change the banana, but it does grab that item if I want to um, print it or use that specific um, specific item in the list for something. Okay, maybe in a method or um, maybe make a statement. The first the first item on my list is Okay. The 
first item on my list is... And the last item is the grocery um, dot get, and then let's do grocery dot size minus one because that should get me my last index, right? Oh, let's change that H. So the first item on my list is banana and the last item is milk. Okay, so it's it's a good method if you need to just grab a specific item um, by way of its index number. Okay, and again, that yields whatever you're going to get. Okay, so if your list are strings, it's going to yield a string. If your list are integers, it's going to yield an integer. Okay, all right, these are our um, main methods that we're going to use or our, our general methods um, that we're going to use in lists. Okay, zoom up or scroll up a little bit. Okay, I hope this was helpful, and I will see you next time.